All right, what's up everybody? So today's video, this is gonna be a response and kind of a follow-up to build off of Alpha Destiny's video about minimalism and how it's gonna fail you when you're trying to train for hypertrophy. The biggest thing for me, I kind of founded this channel on the idea of minimalism in powerlifting strength type training for hypertrophy is going to fail you and it's a terrible place to go down. I have a video that I wanna play so I'm going to stop the video and show you my physique from uh, back when I was doing this style of training. And keep in mind that, uh, actually, you know, I'll play the clip and then I'll get right to it. All right, so this is the part that gets me upset, and, it, and this is why it's my biggest regret. And basically what happened is you take a look at this physique, and it's a, it's a good physique. The physique isn't the problem, and I'll touch on that a little bit later, but I'm sure a lot of you guys would want to look like that. Like, I, I genuinely looked pretty good there. Uh, the problem is the method that I used to get to that physique, and it was a minimalist method, and the issue with it is how much time and energy I had to put into that given method just to get that physique. And I don't say just to act like, I'm not trying to downplay how I look because I know it's a good physique, but here's the problem. Let's go back to strength standards for a second. You look at that physique and what does that person look like? My, my former self, the video I just played, I'm probably just going to put pictures up here too. I would guess like, I don't know, a 275 bench maybe like 200 for 10 on reps or something like that. Deadlifts, probably what, 405, maybe like 425 or something. Squat, 315, 350, maybe somewhere in that area. And this, this is the problem, is that I put all my eggs in one basket and look at the arms, look at the forearms. They are absolute twigs for the numbers that I was hitting when I had this physique, the numbers that I re was required to hit to get to that physique. So the numbers, and this is, this is going to, you guys will be shocked. This guy was deadlifting over 600 pounds. Like, does that look like someone you'd think that by the time you get to a 600 plus deadlift, your physique would just be totally jacked. And this is the problem is that it's a pipe dream. It's not real. It's just these unrealistic strength standards that you finally hit after so much time only to realize they don't work. And now what? Do I need to deadlift 800 pounds? Like, at what point does this stuff end? And it gets better too. It gets better. So I was benching. Here's another good one. This isn't only a situation of uh, one rep maxes and whatnot, because that's, that's an easy one. Like, oh, well, a one rep max doesn't mean that much because you don't actually build much muscle from it. I was benching. 225 for 20 reps 225 for 20 and in, in no way is this me trying to brag about my strength but realistically how many of you guys can bench 225 for 20 or will even get there in anywhere soon i would guess most of you aren't even close now and you'll never be close to that and the good thing about that is you're hearing this advice now while you're not already wasting your time getting there. Because if you got to a 225 or 20 bench, deadlifting over 600 pounds, squatting over 450, and you had that physique that I have in this picture in this video, you would be pissed. And I'm not saying that to put down your strength numbers. I'm telling you that because you need to look at the reality of what training actually is for hypertrophy. And the sooner I can tell you that, the better. And that's why... That's why I'm kind of shitting on my old physique is because that stupid minimalist mindset, the black pilled lazy mindset where I would just go in, do a squat bench deadlift and then do like accessory work, whatever that means in bodybuilding with no, no effort, no intensity, just taking six minutes between sets, just it was an absolute nightmare. And to expand on this point, this is where the problem of minimalism really comes into play. And you might be wondering, like, all right, well, now you just told me not to get these crazy high numbers. Like, what am I supposed to do? I have 108 videos on how to train for hypertrophy on the channel for future reference. 
another problem is that this is one mindset that just I can't stand. They talk about lifts hitting muscles, and it should be the other way around. What's the best lift to hit this muscle? So you talk about a lift like the deadlift, and it's like, oh, it hits your back, your lats, your forearms, glutes, your entire posterior chain. It's like, okay, at what point is this going to end? At Like, at what point are we just going to admit that deadlifts don't work your forearms? Just because a lift hits a muscle doesn't mean it actually grows that muscle. Those are two <laughs> completely different things. Take five seconds and look at the forearms. Look at those forearms. That's 600 plus pounds on deadlift. What would get my forearms big? And I wasn't just doing one rep maxes. I was doing sets of 10 with 500 plus on deadlifts. Like at what point, at what point are we going to realize deadlifts don't do shit for your forearms? Like at what point are we going to say, it's not about hitting a muscle. It's about targeting a muscle to actually stimulate it and grow it. Why are, why are forearms this neglected muscle group? Oh, you, you hold on to things and uh, they kind of get tired doing that. It's, it's stimulus. Like, no, that's not stimulus. Stimulus is taking your forearm, stretching it out just like you would any other muscle with high tension and high resistance, close to failure, if not past failure, because it's an easy muscle group to recover from, and you curl up like this. That is how you train your forearms until you cannot do it anymore. Once you're done with that, you do finger curls in the bottom until you give up, until you cannot physically do another rep. This holding something until your posterior chain gives out and then you just put the bar back down. Wh what logic is this? It's absolutely ridiculous how we let it get to this point where we think, just because a muscle gets like kind of hit on a given lift, we think it's going to grow. Like, no, that's not how that works. Maybe if you're juiced up on steroids and whatnot, like, sure, maybe that will grow you because you don't need to do a whole ton and anything to get you to grow. Don't think about the lift and what muscles that lift targets. Look at the muscles that are on your body. What is the best possible way to target that muscle? And then one thing that I want to add in regarding the power shrugs and the deadlift portion is... There's a reason why I don't actually deadlift in my program, and I think uh, Alex from Alpha Destiny actually had a great point on this, and he's basically saying it's the most overrated lift, which is um, obviously something that kind of resonates with me. So the reason why I don't deadlift is because it takes a bunch of different muscle groups, and it kind of does an okay job of targeting each group. It it hits a decent amount of muscle groups, but it really only targets a couple that are within that. So the way that I see it is, if you're a complete beginner, uh, it, a, a little bit of hitting a muscle can actually stimulate it to grow, but that will not work for very long. Uh, or obviously, if, if you're on steroids and you don't need much stimulus and you can just kind of hit a muscle and actually get it to grow, then sure, that's fine. But for 95% of us that are watching this video and in this community, the reason why I don't include deadlifts is because I like to take the muscles that the deadlift supposedly targets best and actually train that muscle individually in the best way that I can. And that doesn't necessarily mean an isolation, but it means a, a very direct compound movement. So when we're deadlifting, obviously we're going for most posterior chain, all of our back, forearms, and stuff like this. So the way that I like to do it is say, all right, well, why do I deadlift? The most important muscles that are hit on a deadlift for me are gonna be glutes and hams, which deadlifts actually do pretty well. Uh, and then traps, which deadlifts do an okay job of. Um, but the problem with this is you would see more trap growth from doing something like a power shrug, and you'd see more glute and ham growth and low back growth from doing something like an RDL. So the way I see it is I would rather do power shrugs and RDLs and just do two lifts instead of do deadlifts and kind of get a half-assed result uh, just because I'm being more efficient. To me, more efficient is... Um, finding ways to do supersets and giant sets. And I know I already talked about this in the video, so I'm going to cut this off, but yeah, let's get to it. Oh, when you take a training philosophy like the one that I have, I don't deadlift because it's a half range of motion for every muscle group and you're hitting a bunch of muscles that don't actually grow besides the prime movers of the deadlift, aka the first muscle that actually gets close to failure and maybe one or two other muscle groups. I RDL because we deadlift to grow our posterior chain. So, okay, if we're growing our posterior chain, if we're trying to actually target the most specific muscle within that, which is typically going to be the hamstrings and maybe some glutes, 
why not do an RDL? Easier rest time, you're using less weight, you get a bigger range of motion, you get a bigger stretch, you have less muscles that are getting like fatigued but not stimulated. Do your RDLs, and when you're doing an RDL, your traps aren't really going to grow from that. Maybe they will at first a tiny bit when you're a beginner, but you can't bank on that. You're not actually using an RDL to try and grow your traps. And now, if you do want to grow your traps, you do a power shrug. It's the best lift you can do for your traps. Do those two. I would rather do power shrugs on Monday and RDLs on Thursday than deadlifts on both days and get a half-assed result. I would rather do RDLs and power shrugs both twice a week. Like, this is how you should be thinking about bodybuilding. It's not, it's not the lift, it's the muscle. And then what is the best way to actually stimulate that muscle? How can I get that muscle in a, a, a full range of motion with a good stretch, with good tension in that stretch? We're so focused in on what's the least we can possibly do in a lift. How can we target the most possible muscles in one lift so we don't have to do any more lifts? The problem with this is while it's good to be efficient, that's the wrong way to look at efficiency. You should be what you should be thinking, what is the best way to actually stimulate that muscle? And then how can I organize that and set this up to be the most efficient possible? Like efficiency and minimalism in hypertrophy training is going to be supersets, giant sets, stuff like this where we can compact it a little bit down. And I see this happen all the time. You take and it's 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 not one person in particular, it's comments that I see all the time on Instagram. And I I saw one earlier today where some guys like, you don't need to do anything outside of the big six. You'll have a perfect physique just from doing squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, pull-ups, and maybe, I, I don't know if you said one other lift after that, but at what point can we just move on from this? And I'm not just saying this to be contrarian and everything. Like, I beg you again, look at my physique wherever I'm posting it here. That is not the physique that you want for the amount of work required. So I'm just mid-workout right now, and I have one extra point that I kind of want to add on it on the uh, genetics and forearms and targeting and hitting muscles, etc. cetera, point. Um, what I'm thinking about right now is just a little bit of some logic here. So you take, you take somebody like myself, and let's just say it's unknown where my genetics lie. I don't know if I'm genetically gifted or if I have poor genetics, but either way, I think it's kind of a win-win for everybody here because let's say, let's say I have great genetics and say I'm in the, the 80th percentile and I'm just gifted to bodybuild. So the key here is I have great genetics and I still couldn't grow these uh, uh, smaller muscle groups like your forearms, uh, the biceps, triceps, um, parts of the back, stuff like this through uh, being a secondary muscle group on a given lift. That's proof that you need to isolate that you need to isolate and do isolation lifts because I how did I get jacked right so um, that's proof right there on the other side of the spectrum let's say I have bad genetics let's say I'm in the twentieth percentile and I'm just not gifted for this at all I still think that's kind of a win because if I have truly terrible genetics I got pretty damn jacked and I'm not even close like haven't I'm still going guys so I think that's just more proof that if I'm well below average in terms of genetics you guys have all the room in the world to surpass me. So either way, this video isn't supposed to be about what my genetics are, but I think either way, it's a win-win for everyone. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let's go. And then you even look at my physique now and like the comment that I get all the time, like, oh, your forearms are freaky. You have these big, like freaky forearms. That's such a strong muscle group for you. And I'm like, yeah, well, I haven't deadlifted in over three years and my forearms are somehow bigger. Hmm. Like where, where's the, where's the logic here? And the logic is that the deadlifts didn't do shit for my forearms. Again, 500 for 10, 600 plus one rep max, tiny stick, little forearms. And now all I do is stretched wrist curls and occasionally reverse curls. And I train them frequently and hard through a full range of motion close to failure if not to slash past, most of the time it's past failure. And I, I haven't deadlifted in three years. Like it's, it's this, this is the solution. You have to actually target that given muscle. And this is why isolation lifts are key. This is why 
when I first started the channel, I built it on the foundation of isolation that's being so underrated. And then another kind of mid-workout thought I was having is, as I was doing my isolation lifts, one thing I haven't really talked about on the channel that is, I think, a, a point that a lot of us should be kind of self-reflecting on is we talk a lot about compound lifts, and it's kind of a given that those are the more difficult, challenging, fatiguing lifts. One thing I kind of want to challenge on this is uh, I'm, I'm someone that's speaking from experience. I've had the, the fat total. I've had the big deadlift. I've, I, I know what it's like to train hard with compounds, high intensity, high frequency, et cetera. I've been there, done that. So speaking from experience, but, but with that being said, isolation lifts are a, a true test of mental fortitude. They're extremely locally painful. So you take, uh, you take a compound lift and it's easy to train compounds more minimalist because the fatigue, uh, systemic fatigue that accumulates, you take a look at these isolation lifts and the problem is you can do a shit ton of isolation work and not overtrain. And the reason people have a hard time doing this, and this is just, this is just a theory that an idea that I'm throwing out here is that it's a, it's brutal on your pain tolerance. It's a, it's a true challenge to actually push to muscular failure rather than the technical failure. Local fatigue will not impact a whole ton within your programming. It's systemic fatigue that makes the, the bigger difference when it comes to fatigue management. Local fatigue is just going to cause more growth to, to a certain extent. But this is a, a good point to self-reflect on is local fatigue uh, AKA your pain tolerance in the pain that isolation lifts give you actually pushing to muscular failure, holding you back from actually getting the results that you need to get from those isolation lifts. And this is why in, in the, the minimalist mindset, it's almost easier to train compounds than it is isolations. And, uh, I would want to challenge everybody on that. Are you actually taking your isolation lifts to, uh, the best version of muscular failure that you can? Are you pushing as hard as you can? Are you doing, uh, advanced techniques to go to and past failure? Are you doing mechanical drop sets? Even some rest pause style training? Are you doing that stuff? Are you actually challenging yourself with isolations? Because if you are, they're probably not going to be boring. And if you want something hard, those are hard. Those are arguably harder than compound lifts. Hot take, unpopular opinion, I know, but uh, it's some food for thought. And you look at what's important when it comes to bodybuilding and hypertrophy training, and it's typically having a balanced physique you'll notice the guys that look the most jacked they don't have like one freaky muscle group and they're just small everywhere else the biggest most jacked guys like basically all of the noble natties in this community they have no glaring weaknesses that's what it is like sure maybe some of us have a uh, one freaky muscle here or there but it's a uh, the biggest looking guys are they look the biggest because they have the most balanced developed physiques their forearms are big their calves are big their traps are big it's these muscle groups and they're they're all kind of equal none of them are crazy unrealistic and freaky but it's that balance that makes you actually look to jacked uh, and that's going to be key so the the how this ties into the rest of the video is i made a video on this probably two or three months ago about half of your muscle groups are going to be best targeted through compound lifts the other half is going to be best targeted through isolation lifts. And when you bias compound lifts and you say compound lifts are the best bang for your buck and that's all you have to do, you only need to do the big five or the big six or whatever these comments say, you run into issues because now you're leaving half of your muscle groups out. So sure, you can have the biggest quads, you can have 29 inch legs, but when your forearms are the size of a... a a barbell and they they look like a, a little stick what's the point like that's not hypertrophy training you can have jacked biceps but if your triceps are non-existent your arms are still small it's balance that we're seeking and if you're like be honest with yourself how many sets of squat bench and deadlift have you done in the past x years since you started lifting how many sets of stretched wrist curls or overhead tricep extensions, reverse curls have you done? Most people's training is stupidly biased towards compound lifts. Now, I get this comment all the time, too. Well, they'll see one of my upper body workouts, and they're like, oh, well, it's too many isolation lifts. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? Too many isolation lifts? Like, do you just 
hurt yourself? Like what? Too many isolation lifts? What does that mean? I I can't wrap my head around it. They're like too much isolation. There's no logical conclusion on on that. I've thought about it. I'm like, what do you mean? Like at what point? Is it, it's not injury. You're not going to hurt yourself unless you're just doing like way overkill, which I don't do. I do maximum three sets per lift. And I still have enough compound lifts. I probably do more compound lifts than most people. And I still do more isolation than most people. And yeah, like I, I don't get that because I do all the compound lifts that are necessary for me to grow. You shouldn't know how much I need to grow because you're not me. And then I do all the isolation that I want or need to do. Like I'm, I'm a pretty far along in my journey. I'm pretty jacked and I know exactly what works for me. So you should be doing the same. I don't know why you would critique me over what, how many joints are involved in a lift I do for the muscles that I'm trying to target. Yeah, <laughs> enough on that. So the next part that I want to touch on is that minimalism will fail you. And this isn't just in a physical sense, like of, of injury prevention and results. This is, this is where it actually gets important is because minimalism in your training breeds a minimalist mindset, which is going to breed things that you don't want, which I'll touch on in a second here. So minimalism will fail you. The training, uh, minimalism training will equal a minimalist mindset, whether you realize it or not. You don't end up on my channel from seeking mediocre and minimal results. You're here to uh, fulfill your potential through real and optimized bodybuilding methods. So you don't just end up here on uh, a niche bodybuilding channel where I'm sitting in a cold basement wearing the same flannel and hat, talking in a monotone voice to get average mediocre results. You're here because you're in a specific niche and you want to expand your knowledge from someone that has experience in this and can actually think critically about hypertrophy training and bodybuilding. So I know that you guys watching this, you're not here for minimalism. You're not here for me to tell you, oh, go do squat bench deadlift and military press and a couple pull-ups twice a week and you're good. Uh, no, that's not how that works. That's not your mindset. I know 95% of you guys watching this have the desire to have the best possible physique that you can. And in order to fulfill that desire, you cannot get there from minimalist training. And I'm not saying that to fear monger you out of whatever training you want to do. I'm telling you that out of my experience in myself where I get told I have great genetics. And I'm like, okay, well, if I have great genetics, then hypothetically, let's say I do. Let's say I'm the, the perfect man. I'm Steve Reeves and whatever. Then why was I still small when I had those numbers? Do I need to deadlift a thousand pounds to have a good physique? Like at what point does this what what point does this end? And this is where it starts to tie into my philosophy, not just for lifting, but kind of for life in general. And I haven't really touched much on this on the channel, but I do think it will help a lot of you guys that haven't quite figured this one out yet. And I'm I'm still figuring it out too. So I'm, by no means do I understand everything, but this is where I'm at with things. So you have you have these innate desires for something. And that's how I got into hypertrophy training and bodybuilding, something I wanted to do since I was a like six years old. I just thought it was cool to be jacked. No more than that, no less than that. And one thing that I've realized along the way is in the times where I'm doing everything that I can in a maximalist sense to maximize results, that's when I can sit at peace with myself and actually, one, obviously reap the benefits of the work that I'm putting into the gym, but also be satisfied and fulfilled in life. When I'm half-assing my lifting, there's something wrong because I'm not half-assing it because I no longer want to be big. I'm half-assing it because my mindset's in the gutter at that point in time, whether it's infected from some type of black pill type content I was uh, consuming at the time, or I'm just going through maybe a phase of depression or something. When I'm not fulfilling that innate potential to become the best bodybuilder naturally that I possibly can, there's something wrong because I haven't committed to either side. And this isn't just to say that everybody needs to be the best bodybuilder because that this ultimately it comes down to what you actually want and you need to obviously choose your battles too if lifting is a battle that you have the opportunity to pursue because it's an innate desire that you have you to feel your best and be fulfilled in my experience you have to do two either of these two things 
you have to either commit to bodybuilding and go all in on your hypertrophy training and do everything you can, which is going to take on a maximalist mindset, or you have to logically and reasonably decide not to pursue lifting and you have to have a legit argument founded in logic for why you're not pursuing bodybuilding that could be anything else like let's say you have three big innate goals that you have like one's lifting one is starting a business and one is i don't know running a marathon and if you you're going to have to sacrifice one of them so if you can sacrifice lifting in order to go all in on the business and marathon then that's okay and you can set a peace with yourself but if you decide to take up lifting which obviously a hundred percent of you guys watching this video in the channel are you need to go all in on it and it needs to be a high priority in your life for you to for you to be completely fulfilled and satisfied and actually proud of what you're doing so that is uh what i have found in my experience to be the most important thing obviously that's my philosophy and that's an opinion you don't have to agree with that but uh, i do want to be transparent with my motives in, in hypertrophy and for this channel and the reason why i I've adopted this mindset is because when I was doing this minimalist style training and focusing on, on goals that weren't my innate actual goals that I wanted to achieve, I wasn't, something was off and some, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I was, I was too influenced by other people's goals and I wasn't chasing my own goals and I knew it wasn't the right path, but I followed it anyways because I couldn't see past the influence that uh, the the community at that time had on me and that's my biggest regret so that's why I want to make these videos and actually talk about my life philosophy a little so bit. now that I've actually started to build up my physique and I've, I've busted past all those minimalist beliefs and everything it's been so much more fulfilling to actually achieve the goals that I have wanted to like I finally have pretty big arms and forearms are they where they should be no not yet because I'm still making up lost ground but I'm on the right path there and I'm doing everything that I possibly can to get to that path. And that that's ultimately the most important thing. So some of these older uh, mindsets that I used to have, like here, here's just a couple quotes of things that this minimalist training uh, put into my mindset kind of kind of unwillingly that looking back, it's it's pretty sad how kind of lazy my mindset was with this minimalist style of thinking. Like normal thoughts that I would have would be, Arms have a limited growth potential. I have bad, insert muscle here, genetics. Um, forearms get hit on back training, which, which is just kind of ridiculous. Um, I'll gain half as much muscle each year. Just get stronger. My future physique is predetermined by genetics. And I'm not going to go and just debunk every single one of those quotes, but you can see how those that way of thinking, that minimalist way of thinking it's going to demotivate you and it's going to derail you. So I'm going to leave the video at that today. I hope that resonates with you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'll see you guys probably in like, I don't know, 48 hours or something.